I see my name in shiny lights. Yeah, a different city every night. Oh, I, I swear the world better prepare for when I'm a billionaire. It's time to get down to business on the weekend's number one business program. Known as the king of networking, your host, Shalom Klein, has worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and created countless jobs. So, to success, let's get down to business. And indeed, we are all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. In business, we talk a lot about business here. You are on with Get Down to Business, and I'm your host, Shalom Klein. Remember, you can always download podcasts from Get Down to Business on my website at shalomklein.com. While you're there, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Shalom Klein. It's going to be a jam-packed week of content and information you will not want to miss. Super excited for this conversation. I am joined by Sabrina Runbeck, who is the author of an outstanding book, Asian Women Who Boss Up. And we are going to have a conversation certainly about the book, but talk about the experiences that led up to the book. So Sabrina, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Shalom. Hi, everyone, for listening in. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, Sabrina, there's always a story behind the entrepreneur, behind the author, behind the journey. Sabrina, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. I am. uh, Thank you for having me for sharing this uh, story (laughs) on my journey. For sure. I am someone who uh, was uh, born an only child. Uh, At a young age, my parents got divorced. And in the Asian family, uh, as a girl, always the same as, ah, just be smart, get good grades, have a job and get married. You're pretty much settled. Why do you have to do more? Versus the uh, boys, all my cousins are male and they're going off doing all kinds of stuff and no one question anything. So I have a little rebellious in myself. So get myself two bachelor degree, two masters, just kept going, got into one of the best heart lungs surgery center in the country and really in the world because people fly in to see us. And I thought like, wow, okay, this is exciting. I can't really see anything else but heart and lung surgery and let's do this. And feeling like at that point, when you're young, new into the game of medicine, you have to really prove to yourself. So I continuously to take more calls, to do more cases. And then I got to the point, it's like, wow, this is not sustainable. And I I can't just be doing this all the time. And I remember one morning, it was hardly eight o'clock. I'm already exhausted. And my body felt weak and my hands were even cramping. And I had a fever of one on one degrees at a time. Now, I was trying so hard just to concentrate. It wouldn't have been so bad if I had the day off. But in fact, I was standing in front of my patient's open chest, trying all that I had just to get through that surgery. And my nurses even took pity on me and keep passing Dayquil and cough drop under my mask to keep me going. And of course, we all know it doesn't take a medical professional to tell you that your body is on strike and is making you to stop. So the next morning when I woke up covered with nice sweat, can barely just get out of bed to get a glass of water, I had to admit, I can't do it to call sick. And when I pick up the phone, spoke to my boss, his response was, wow, Sabrina, you're just telling me this now? Like, I can predict why I can get sick and stop doing that. That felt like stab in my heart. And that's the time when I just decided, let's look back, let's do something else. And to really, how can I truly fell back in love with this career I worked so hard for and not just get trapped into the things. Now, I believe that many healthcare wow. professionals is uh, in that similar boat. Absolutely, Sabrina. Wow, what a story. I promised our listeners that there's a story behind the, behind the book, but really the book, um, uh, women who boss up. It's really uh, Asian women who, who who boss up. It's really not just a book. It is a. Uh, it's really it's 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 a force of nature. It's it's a mission for you. And I know that you are a uh, a very accomplished keynote speaker. You've been uh, seen on NBC, ABC, Fox, CBS, and so on. And uh, quite the overachiever, might I add, with many degrees and quite a bit of education. So I want to ask you the question of how 
can people boss up in life? What is the, the one message that as we have this conversation on a Sunday evening, what can people put in place in their businesses, in their lives that can make a difference in their surroundings? How can they boss up in life? That's such an amazing question. Now, for sure, this book was a collaborative. I'm one of the only medical professional in there. And when I speak and when I coach, it's always focused on productivity because I believe that we can be really good and figure out things to reduce stress and to do things that will take care of ourselves. However, it's really about tapping into that full potential. We start to lose our boundaries, start to lose our aim in life. That's why we got pulled into 10,000 different direction, keep adapting new things into our business, thinking if I get to a certain point, uh, accomplishment, achievement, then I can be fulfilled or happy. But the, ultimately, the sole message is that we have to say no to just about everything. Then we can say heck yes to the only thing that truly matter. So when to say yes and no, that's what I help people on to stop those overwhelm and truly be able to remove your sabotaging tendency. Because in positive psychology, we say that there are an equation for achievement, which half the equation is what most people think is potential. Your IQ, your EQ, your degree, certification, skills, experience. But what they're missing half the time is that those things, even you have a lot of degree and experience, if you don't know what to extract, that is a waste. Right. Just like Napoleon Hill said, knowledge is now power until you use it and until you use it correctly. So what's the other half of the equation? We call the positive quotient, which means you have 10 sabotaging tendency. Do you recognize what they are? And even you do. Do you know how to pivot yourself out of that gutter and stuck state and the anxiety state and go into the empowerment five state? Wow. I'm chatting with Sabrina Rundbeck who again is one of the, uh, one of the 18, 18 Asian women um, who have broken the mold to achieve, overcome difficulties, and inspire change. And Sabrina has been sharing uh, a little bit of, of her own journey, her own story, um, which is incredible. And the book, regardless of your background, is certainly a, uh, a, 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 a lesson learned for uh, bosses or bosses in the making for sure. So Sabrina, I, I do want to tie this into sort of what's been going on in the world right now. We know that uh, obviously it was just a couple of short weeks ago where there were the, the horrific, horrific events in Atlanta and frankly around the country um, of, of uh, Asian discrimination. How have, what experiences have you had as an Asian entrepreneur, as a leader in the community? Have you experienced that and how can people fight back and how can people make sure that we are, call it, uh, embracing in the business community, which I've certainly found is a nonpartisan and a non-discriminatory environment. But what experiences do you have and what lessons would you challenge our listeners with? Definitely, it's not just the Asian community, but because Asian are seen as the token minority and things like discrimination is never part of our community, but it is. Uh, small comments, even from uh, patients or people who you just uh, come across would be, oh, Sabrina, is that your real name? But I, I mean, it's a real name, not your family name. And then I have to respond, yes, it's on my driver's license, it's on my medical license. How is that really impacting you? And then the common question we always get asked is, where are you from? But where are you truly from? Like our background actually made us unique. And even you have the similar culture, you are still you. You're not defined by any culture you have. Now, those especially, I mean, in Houston, it's not actually as bad, but recently, actually last week, CDC, the uh, Center for Disease Control and, and Prevention has came out to say that public health issue has declared a crisis of racism due to the recent report. And police report has shown overall crime last year decreased by 6%, but anti-Asian hate crime increased by 145%. So it's not just a small incident here and there, it actually impacts many of us. So even my national organization, AAPA, have approached me. So a 
This past Tuesday, I host a, a event on our national platform to interview five other healthcare professionals who are AAPIs on how their life has been impacted and their patient's life being impacted. So it's definitely something sure. we continue need to speak up about. Sure. Absolutely. Well, again, Sabrina Runbeck, we're at the point of the conversation with just 30 seconds remaining where I want to make sure people know where they can purchase a copy of the book, learn more about everything you're doing, including your coaching um, and uh, availability. So uh, how can people contact you? Yeah, if you like to reduce the uh, overwhelm, uh, stop the endless to-do list and really save at least four hours of work uh, per week, uh, go to sabrinarombach.com dot com for slash blueprint. Let me see if I can add value for you. And if you wanted to try to find a book and with the bonuses that we are doing at sabrinarombach.com for slash. Fantastic. Well, Sabrina, we are out of time. Thank you so much. We'll be back and get some business in a moment. <laughs>